Kevin Brennan. Thank you, Chair. Um, Lord Frost, I've been a government minister in three different government departments, including the Cabinet Office, and I find your approach to select committee scrutiny pretty appalling, actually, in trying to set out saying you're sorry at the start of ha having only an hour. As you know, we would like longer than an hour because that's what's needed on this very important issue. And I believe that you aren't keen to be here and you've tried to evade coming before us. But I won't uh, pursue that because time is pressing. Do you see the issue of touring essentially as an immigration issue or a trade issue? Lord Frost. Um, thank you, Mr. Brennan. And I think you're right not to pursue that point on scrutiny because this is my fifth select committee appearance within a month and I've got another two in the next couple of weeks. So um, I don't uh, particularly appreciate it if it's suggested that I'm not fulfilling scrutiny responsibilities uh, and uh, I am here now. I think the issue before us is what we can do, as Mr. Dynich set out, to support uh, our great creative industries. Great. And so, would you mind answering my would you mind answering my question? Do you see it essentially as an immigration issue or a trade issue? So, the, the complexity of these uh, this particular question is that it is both. That in negotiations, uh, the negotiations we conducted last year, there is a visa angle to it, which is obviously an immigration issue, and there is a work permit uh, and uh, economic needs issue, which is mode four and a trade issue. And that's why these things are, are particularly complicated mm. to handle, I, I, the interaction between these two things. I've knocked many doors in my political career getting elected to Parliament. And never once have I come across anyone on the doorstep saying, what are you going to do about all these violinists coming over here from Poland, uh, you know, taking our jobs in, in this country? Essentially, this is an issue about trade, isn't it? Uh, uh, because we're not talking about people permanently coming to live in the UK. We're talking about having uh, the movement of artists and uh, musicians and others in order to earn valuable export currency in an industry with which we, as the chair rightly pointed out, we have an export sports surplus. Isn't that correct? So um, you're right in the sense that uh, we are delighted uh, for people to come and perform here. And that's why we have extremely liberal rules uh, on the subject and why um, Europeans can come and perform here with very few restrictions. On the wider question, um, you may not have heard anybody uh, complaining about Polish violinists. I, I agree with that, but nevertheless, free movement was an issue in the referendum, and it was very clear that um, free movement ends with our exit from the EU, and this government fought an election and won an election. Lord Frost, I've, I've been Frost elected six that. times to the House of Commons, and I don't think any MPs need a, a lecture on the nature of democratic mandates to make clear uh, what, from members uh, of the House of Lords. Can I, can I just read to you what one of the uh, uh, Caroline Dynage's predecessors said to the Commons in a debate I was present at in January 2020, post the 2019 election that you've just referred to. Uh, Nigel Adams, who was a minister at the time, he said, touring is the lifeblood life of the industry. And he went on to say, it's essential that freedom of movement for our, is protected for artists post-2020. He said... He didn't say preferential, he didn't say desirable. He said, he certainly didn't say uh, that it should be ended, freedom of movement for artists. He said it was essential to us in the House of Commons. Do you understand why uh, musicians and artists and tour crew who work in this industry feel they've been sold down the river by your deal? All I can say is that our approach to these questions was set out at the very beginning of 2020 in the document that we published called The UK Approach. Uh, to these negotiations. What you see is what you get with what we have, with the way we've approached them. And I think it, is, it has been clear. We are doing our very best and continue to do so to uh, facilitate um, outward travel by musicians and touring performers so they, they can perform. So when the minister said it was essential that freedom of movement is protected for artists, that, that, that actually was wrong, was it? So and, and nobody can dictate the uh, outcome of a negotiation that hasn't yet taken place. And as is well known, and as I've written to the committee in some detail, we did put forward proposals which would have very much dealt with the problem we now face. Um, sadly, the EU wouldn't accept them. And I'm afraid that's just the reality of uh, the way these negotiations run. The creative industries are worth £115 billion. Pounds, and as we've heard already, are a net exporter, a growth area, in fact. Um, 
Why were the negotiations concluded with no deal for such an important sector and a growing sector of our economy? So, um, I, I, I don't want to, to repeat myself too much, but um, the and we've set out the detail in the letter that I referred to, the, the fundamental difficulty was that the only basis on which the EU was prepared to tackle this question was the question of a permanent visa waiver. We do not agree permanent visa waivers because they deprive of us, us of control over our immigration system. That's why we proposed other ways through this, but unfortunately they, they weren't acceptable. Um, I, I get that not everyone may agree with uh, the end of free movement and its consequences, but it was the government's policy and that's what we are implementing. I, I think it's a complete exaggeration to say this would mean an end of free movement if there was a visa, visa waiver scheme. And it's obviously clearly not something that was uh, spelt out prior or even after the election by ministers who said at that time that freedom of movement for musicians and artists was essential to the House of Commons in Hansard. Um, we've been obviously trying to talk to you for several months. I recently read a reply to a letter that was sent to you by the Carry On Touring campaign who presented a petition to Parliament with 286,000 signatures. Um, but the reply to them didn't come from you, but from someone called Ollie. There was no surname supplied on the response from the corres a correspondence officer in the Cabinet Office. Why wouldn't any reasonable person working in the industry not conclude from your demeanour and inaction on this subject that you don't really give a fig about the creative industries? So um, I don't think anyone, any reasonable person could uh, conclude that. We fought very hard in the negotiations last year to find a solution that was consistent with the end of free movement as a, as a formal policy. And we are working very hard now uh, to um, find a way forward, as, as we, we've set out. And uh, we, it is a, a major priority for us, and we, we hope to be able to deliver some results during this year. But it is a negotiation, it's not in our control, um, and we, we do the very best we can to achieve results. Sir Elton John, who you, you did find time to meet before you were able to meet us, has issued a pretty blunt assessment of the consequences of this failure um, what's your plan of action for the next six months and well, what was your response to what Sir Elton John said after you met him? So, I mean, our plan of action is, as has been set out, it is to work with the countries uh, in priority that do not have particularly liberal rules on this, this subject. Um, and see if we can persuade them to improve them and um, if we could all get together behind achieving that. So I think that would be, be good. I had a good conversation with, with uh, Elton John. I thought it was helpful to hear directly. Um, uh, I, I can't help noticing that he had his first hits before the, before the UK even became a member of the, the European Union. So I think there's probably more at play here uh, than uh, pure uh, rules applying within the, the then uh, European community. Well, look, talent is mm. important, and that's why we support our talented creative industries. Well, of course, the Musicians' Union, of, of which I'm a member, I should declare, and have had support from them previously, and the ISM have pointed out that touring is much more com complicated now uh, across Europe post-Brexit than it would have been before Britain joined the European Economic Community when it did. Uh, why wasn't this issue even on the agenda of the first meeting of the Partnership Council, which you co-chair, uh, when it was top of the agenda, apparently, according to the Secretary of State, and also that the government was working flat out on it, according to the Prime Minister? Why didn't you even put it on the agenda? So the agendas are agreed jointly, and there are only a limited number of did you Did you ask to put it on the agenda? And there needs to be. Uh, so that is why we... Um, uh, believed the most appropriate way was to raise it under mm. any other business. Did you ask to put it on the agenda before well, the, the meeting? Well, the fact is that, um, as, as you will know, um, work visas and these arrangements are in the competence of the member states, uh, not uh, the competence of the, the European Union. But you and raised it in any other business. Did you ask to put it on the agenda is my simple question, yes or no? Well, you can't put something that is not the business of... Uh, 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 an organisation on that organisation's agenda, but that doesn't stop us raising it in other ways, and that's what we did. 
So is the Partnership Council will not be discussing this issue. I'm just going to wind up with one final question, Lord Frost, on, a, on another matter before colleagues, and I want to press you further on this issue, and that's about the um, concern of the possible reversal of the UK films and programmes being treated as European um, for cultural quota purposes in, in the future. I know it hasn't happened yet, it's just a report on it, but what would be the impact of that on exports and inward investment in the UK, UK creative sector if that were to happen? And, and what are you going to do beyond hoping that good sense prevails to try and stop that from happening? So um, it's a question that uh, DCMS probably know uh, better than I do, um, it being that department's business. Um, as you say, it's at a very early stage. We, we hope the good sense will prevail because we believe in free export of uh, these sorts of products and don't have um, don't believe in restricting imports ourselves. Um, we have we will we will do all we can to influence it. Um, in the end, this is a European Union decision, and we're not a member of the European Union. Well, I simply note you you negotiate the deal, and you don't seem to know what the impact would be on our UK creative sectors of uh, of, of a, a restriction on our exports and inward investment. But anyway, back to you, Chair. Thank you.